G'day guys, my name is Michael Woolhouse. This is ABCPE. This is the site where we try and make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. Today we're looking to look at the acute muscular responses to exercise. So the acronym that we like to use for acute muscular responses is the acronym FORTU. Now, um, don't ask me what it means or why we're going with FORTU, but uh, the great man stockers came up with this one. And for some reason, our kids never forget it. So it comes to them still a couple of years after they've left our school. They can still remember this FORTU acronym. So I think it's worth remembering F is for fuel usage and this will increase and then but fuel stores will decrease. We have an increase in oxygen consumption and increase in the recruitment of muscle fibers and motor units. It's going to be an increase in temperature, increased enzyme activity and an increase in waste production. Okay, so fuel usage, um, as we increase our intensity we're going to need more atp resynthesis and for that obviously we need the fuels it's important that you link the correct fuel usage with the correct event um, and don't forget also if we're using more pc for example there's going to be more pc depletion second part of our acronym is oxygen consumption is going to increase um, and with this we have an avo2 difference which will also increase um, as we are talking about in the past videos, when we exercise, we need to use more oxygen. Um, therefore, our muscles are going to consume more of this oxygen that's being delivered to it. Okay, so AVO2 difference can be a little bit of a tricky concept. Hopefully, uh, this really sketchy drawing of mine will help you. So here we have the arteries. Arteries take blood away from the heart, and they've got lots of oxygen in it. They're going to deliver this oxygen, hopefully, to the muscles. On the other side of the muscles, you've got the veins, and the veins are going to deliver this blood back to the heart. So AVO2 difference is the difference in oxygen concentration from the arterial blood, which is here, and the venous blood, which is here. In between that is the muscles. So when we're at rest, we actually don't demand much O2 because our energy demands are pretty low. So if we have the oxygen concentration in our arteries is about 20 mils of oxygen per 100 mils of blood. As I said, we don't need much oxygen whilst we're at rest. At rest sorry. Um, so we don't take much oxygen out of this blood and therefore our oxygen concentration in the veins is still pretty high at about 16 mils per 100. So AVO2 difference, the difference in these two numbers is going to be about four mils of oxygen per 100 mils of blood. So during exercise, things change a fair bit. Our energy demands have increased and therefore our oxygen demands are going to increase. So in the arterial blood, we're still going to have a pretty high concentration of oxygen. Some people get a little bit confused that why doesn't this oxygen concentration increase? Well, the concentration in the blood stays pretty much the same. Just the amount of blood being delivered to the muscle will increase. And that's due to the increased cardiac output that we talked about in previous uh, videos. So here, as our oxygen demand increases, our muscles are going to consume a lot more of this oxygen. They can use this oxygen for aerobic ATP resynthesis. So if more of this oxygen diffuses into the muscles, that means there's going to be less oxygen left in the venous blood. So now we only have about 6 mils per 100 mils of oxygen. Therefore, if we do 20 minus 6, we have a rather large increase in our AVO2 difference. Now it's 14 mils per 100 mils. So that sees that we have an increase in AVO2 difference during exercise, and that's due to the fact that our muscles are going to demand more oxygen for aerobic ATP resynthesis. Here's a question from 2017, and I think there's a couple of things I want you to have a um, look at. Here, VCARB defined uh, AVO2, and it's really the amount of oxygen that's extracted by the muscle. Um, so that shows you how important it is. Another example of how important it is, VO2 max is probably the best test of aerobic fitness. And the formula for VO2 max is Q, or cardiac output, times AVO2 difference. Q being the amount of blood that gets pumped around the body, and AVO2 difference being the amount of oxygen that the muscles can utilize. So I think it's just worth noting that um, AVO2 difference plays a really big part 
in how good your performance is going to be. The R on the FORTU acronym stands for recruitment of motor units or the recruitment of muscle fibers. And this will also increase with exercise. So motor units are motor neuron and all the muscle fibers it stimulates. If you are doing a forceful activity such as a shot put or a discus throw, you're gonna recruit more motor units and therefore more muscle fibers are going to contract and that'll allow you to do your forceful muscular contraction. If you're going for a walk or a slow jog, uh, you won't recruit as many of those motor units and therefore those muscle fibers. So the T in the FORTU acronym stands for temperature and when we exercise, we're gonna get hot. That's because the fact that heat is a byproduct of aerobic ATP resynthesis. And that's the reason why you might start your training session with your warm-up jumper on, but after you've been running around for a while, you'll be able to take it off because you're hot. Now, when we get really hot, uh, there's gonna be some thermoregulation that occurs through vasodilation of blood vessels to the skin and vasoconstriction to the muscles, and that's gonna cause sweating, as you can see in that picture there. The E stands for enzyme activity, and this will also increase. So enzymes are things that speed up chemical reactions, and that also occurs in the muscle. Um, I like to tell my students that you can think of it as the turbo boost that you might get in something like Mario Kart or some other video game. The enzyme's gonna provide that turbo boost inside your muscle. A hint that the question is steering you towards uh, talking about enzyme is the fact that a lot of these enzymes ends in this suffix of ASE or A. So ATPase is an enzyme that helps speed up the breakdown um, of PC and ATP. So it's going to help with the ATP PC system. So if you see the word ATPase, I expected you to know all of these enzymes, but it just will help you answer the question if you know that something like lipase is going to help with the breakdown of fat. The final thing on our FORTU acronym is W for waste production, and this will also increase. Again, this is dependent upon the exercise you do. So in a 100 meter event, uh, we're gonna have the waste of inorganic phosphate due to that being a byproduct of the ATP PC energy system. In the 400 meter or the high intensity aerobic events, those waste is gonna be lactate and hydrogen ions. So we like lactate. I like to tell my kids we can actually use lactate and lactate can be beneficial to the body and actually can help with some ATP resynthesis. However, we hate hydrogen ions. We do not want to have hydrogen ions in our muscles because both uh, inorganic phosphate and hydrogen ions are gonna inhibit muscular contraction and therefore lead to a decrease in performance. So here we have a sample question from ABCPE um, and I'll give you a bit of an idea of how we suggest that you should go about answering this question. The most important thing in this question is that the event goes for 12.28 seconds. So we're gonna be thinking about these anaerobic and in particular ATP PC system, acute muscular responses. Um, so this is how we'd get our kids to answer this. We'd have the FORTU acronym down the side and we'd get them to cross off the things that aren't super relevant. So for an ATP PC dominant event, the two least relevant of these acute muscular responses are oxygen um, consumption because it's an anaerobic event and temperature. It's gonna to be too short for them to get really too hot for this event. So then they would go through and hopefully be able to answer how these acute muscular responses are gonna affect this performance. So fuel depletion, we're gonna decrease in PC, which means we're gonna slow down. Uh, if we can increase our muscle fiber recruitment, we're gonna be faster. More enzyme activity is gonna to lead to more breakdown of fuels, so more ATP resynthesis. Again, we're gonna run faster. And to be detrimental to performance, there's gonna be an increased waste. So in this particular event, inorganic phosphate, there will be a little bit of hydrogen ion accumulation, but mainly inorganic phosphate is gonna inhibit muscular contraction means we are going to run slower. So just to finish off, here's a bit of a summary table giving you uh, three different types of events and their most important acute responses. Hopefully that'll help you answer any future questions you might have. Okay, that's all for the acute muscular responses to exercise. We hope that that has helped make uh, BC physical education as easy as ABC. Please head to our website, abcpe.com.au for some more information, heaps of videos up there. Um, if you like what you see, please chuck us a like on Facebook or Insta. 
Uh, we'll be running seminars a bit later on in the year, so we hope to see your guys' faces there. Um, but in the meantime, good luck with all your upcoming sacks, and we hope to see you soon. Cheers.